Hello everyone, this is Noble H. Mustak, and today we are here with another American Legion's Mathematics League problem from 2014. And then we're doing a relay round problem number two. I'm going to do all three problems in one video. So all of these problems I did within six minutes. So that was kind of a surprise. Um, but I did them within six minutes using guess and check in some way for each problem. So, yeah. Um, compute the least positive integer n is such that GCD, the greatest common divisor of n cubed and n factorial, is greater than or equal to 100. So, we're going to guess and check. Again. So, let's say n equals 1. Is that greater than or equal to 100? No. So, can the greatest common divisor be greater than or equal to 100? No. Same for 2, same for 3, same for 4. 5 cubed is 125. That's greater than 100. But if you look at 5 factorial, that's 120. This is 5 times 25. This is 5 times 24. The reason I know that is because I've worked with small numbers a lot in math competitions. So when you work with small numbers, and you work with small powers, and you work with factorials, you just see these patterns arise. So I know the GCD now is 5. So that's just a pattern I've seen. And y y if someone was doing this out by hand, and they factored it all like prime factorization, they would have also noticed that it is 5. But it's easier to, to to use patterns that you've used in other math competitions, and that'll just save you minutes of time, which is very helpful in a really round, when you have like three minutes. Six cubed equals 2 and 6. I'm just going to write down... Oh, wait, no. Oh, sorry. Um, 6 factorial is 720. So we have... Here, this is 6 times 6 times 6. This is 6 times 120. 120 is 6 times 20. So I'm going to factor out this 6. That's 2 times 3. This is 2 times 10. So clearly 3 and 10 are co-prime. So you have GCD is 6 times 6 times 2. That's 72. So we keep going. 7 cubed. 3, 4, 3. That's 7 times 7 times 7. 7 factorial is 7 times 7, 20. So 7, 20 is not divisible by 7. So it's co-prime with 7 times 7. So the GCD is just 7. Keep going. Cubed is. I'm going to use the fact that 8 is 2 cubed, so this is 2 to the 9th. And then 8 factorial is 8 times 7 times 6 factorial, which is 720. Now we need to factor this. Um, we already said that this was like 6 times 6 times 2 times 10. 2 is 2 times 5. This is 2 times 3. This is 2 times 3. So if you count, we have. Oh, 8 is 2 cubed. So we want to find the number of 2s here, because since this is 2 to the 9th. So here, if you count the number of 2s, it's actually 7. So this, there's 3 2s here, and then this is 1 2. This is the 5th 2, and then the, we have 2 more 2s here, so that's all in all 7 2s. So the GCD is 2 to the 7th, which is 128. Here you have to be really careful that you count the number of 2s correctly, because if you miss 2, then it's 2 to the 6th, which is 64, that's less than 100, and then you miss the correct answer. So be careful with that. And then the uh, our answer is 8, since that's when we've gotten our uh, GCD greater than or equal to 100. Okay. Um, so, no. For the next problem, t equals 8. Um, at a party, everyone shakes hands with everybody else except exactly once, except Ed, who leaves early. A grand total of 20 handshakes takes place. Compute the number of people at the party who shook hands with Ed. Okay. So, first we need... We, we're not going to use T... We're just going to set up the problem during our first minute, because that pro problem t probably took one minute. So we have one minute to s work on the problem without t. So 20 t handshakes left, so that's probably going to be an equation. So, um, compute. we don't want to compute the number of people at the party who shook hands with Ed. Um, I'm going to call that x. So, other than Ed, let's leave Ed out of the equation. What happened other than Ed? Well, let's test it right here. Everyone shakes hands with everyone else exactly once. Let's call all of those people except Ed. Let's say that there's, um, I'm going to say that there's N of those people. So other than Ed, there's N people. If uh, all of those N people shake hands with each other exactly once, then we, each handshake happens between two people. So we're choosing two people from to N people. So the formula is N choose two. Those are, that's the number of handshakes that happened in that room. And this is a very common formula, which is very useful. And it's probably going to come up again. 
So you should remember that. If you have a room of n people, and they all handshake each other exactly once, then there's n choose 2 handshakes. And that's the same thing as n times n minus 1 all over 2. So those are the other handshakes that happened other than x. So the number of handshakes that happened in total is x plus n choose 2. And that's equal to 20t. So now that probably took one minute, so I'm going to use t now. And then, okay. So what else do we know? Um, well, the number of people that shook hands with Ed, Ed has to shake hands with other people in that room. So there's n other people in that room other than Ed. So we know that um, 0 is less than x is less than or equal to n. So x is between 0 and n. So now if we guess and check, like let's say we put in 1. Um, and 1 choose, oh sorry, let's say you put 2. So 2 choose 2 is 1, so you get x equals 159. But that makes no sense, because there's only two pe other people, so he's, it can't be 159. It needs to be less than that. So this is a contradiction. So clearly n equals 2 is not the answer. And it's probably not equals n equals 3 or n equals 4. In fact, since we got such a big number, I'm going to guess really big. I'm going to guess really high. I'm going to guess 15. Okay? So 15 times 14 over 2, um, what's that? Oh, okay. So here we get x equals 55. That's still too big. So I'm going to go further. I'm going to guess 20. Okay, so now we get a negative number. So clearly we went to 4. So now I'm going to guess lower. I'm going to guess 18. Okay, so, um, this works, because we have 0 is less than x is less than or equal to n, which is 18. So, that that works. We got a solution of x equals 7. So that that's our answer. That's it. Okay. Oh, no, that's not it. There's another problem, sorry. Um, so for the next problem, t equals 7. Again, that was just guess and check. Um... Given the sequence u n is such that u three equals five, u six equals eighty nine, and u n plus two equals three u n plus one minus u n, compute u t. So what do I see right off the bat? I'm gonna guess again that I, I know five. So first of all, um, the next term is the last term times three minus the second to to last term. So I know that five is 3 times 2 minus 1. That's just another pattern that I've seen throughout math compositions throughout the years that 5 is 3 times 2 minus 1. So I'm going to guess that this sequence goes 1, 2, 5 because I made 2 the last term and 1 the second to last term. So if we keep going with this, the next term is going to be 3 times 5 minus 2, which is 13. Um, the next term is going to be 3 times 13 minus 5, which is 34. The next term is going to be 3 times 34, which is n minus 13. So that's 102 minus 13, which is 89. So that's the sixth term. As you can see, we have u6 equals 89. So even though I guessed with my initial terms, and I didn't use the fact that u6 equals 89, it still worked. I, I guessed correctly. I was very lucky in that guess. Hopefully you noticed that. If you don't, I'm going to show you how to do it without guessing like that. Except it probably takes six minutes, in my opinion. But uh, if you notice that, then you're very lucky. I was very lucky. And you can do it in three minutes. So, uh, um, right now we don't know t equals seven. So, I'm s but... Uh, it if you are preparing for this problem, you would just keep computing terms. So I'm just going to compute the next term, um, which is 3 times 89 minus 34. That's 3 times 90 minus 1. I'm going to distribute that. 3 times 90 minus 3. So minus 3 minus 34 is minus 37. This is 270. 270 minus 37 is 233. So that's our answer. So we, um, if you d didn't get an answer, because getting to t equals 7 is probably going to take you two minutes, so you could just keep computing terms, like, 
you have to wait until you get t in order to get an answer, but you could just keep computing terms until you get an answer. And then once you get t equals 7, you notice, oh, I already have the 7th term. I already have that answer. I can do this within 10 seconds by just writing the, n n the number 233 and handing it in. So that just helps you with time by computing more terms without get having t and without waiting for it. So yeah. Um, yeah, the answer was 233. So now, I did that using guess and check. But how did they do it? Because they don't use guess and check. They're like better. They're better than that. Okay. So they have this. Um well they noticed u six equals eighty nine. So using the formula, um that's three times the fifth term minus the fourth term. And then they also noticed that the fifth term was three times the fourth term minus the third term. And they also noticed that the third term was five. So now I think we have Okay, so as you can see, we have two equations and two variables. So it's just like the two system linear equations that you've seen in like all of your algebra 1 classes. So we just solve this equation. Uh, I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 3. Um, add the equations. Not sure. Okay, this is right. So u4 is 13, so because we divide both sides by 8. And then we get, um, so we know u5 is 3u4 minus 3, so we just substitute, and then we get u5 equals 34, and then to get u7, we know u7 equals 3u6 minus u5, which is 3 times 89 minus 34, which we always said was 233, and that's our answer. So you can do it with a two-variable system of equations. Um, I think that would take longer, but if that works for you, you can also do that. Um, they also have an alternate solution, which seems to be a lot longer, but it's with a Fibonacci sequence, and how it's like alternating Fibonacci sequence numbers. Um, you can read that if you want. I'll, there's also a link in the description, so you can read that. Um, but yeah, that's that's it for this relay round. I thought it was pretty interesting, because guess and check really helped me on this, and that makes me wonder, could guess and check somehow help me on the code and geometry relay, which took me 15 minutes to do? So maybe... Maybe guess and check could also help me with that. But other than that, that's really it for this um for this video. So I hope you like these problems. I hope you do more of them. And have fun doing your math.